Gonna build a mountain from a little hill. Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and we're back with another tutorial video. And this time, we're going to talk about the path system and how you can use it to create interesting viewing galleries for your habitats. Now, I have been getting a lot of requests of doing a tutorial for the path system. Now, there are so many things you can do, so it's probably impossible for me to show you guys everything you can do, but I will teach you guys the basics of things I use the most to create some really nice viewing galleries for your habitats. And if you're looking for a pathing tutorial specifically for underwater viewing galleries, I highly recommend you to watch my other video. And I'm also going to link a video of the awesome Silverad. He made a very good tutorial about the path system and how to make plazas in Planet Coaster. It's basically the exact same path system. It is also a little bit wonky, so you really just have to make it your own and just test it and try it out a lot of times to really get used to the path system. So it's not like, it's not you if you're having issues with it. It's just a little bit wonky, so you really have to get used to it and know how the path system sometimes react to things. So without further ado, let's just jump into it and I will give you guys some examples of how you can use the path system together with your habitats to create interesting views galleries so these are actually the basics of how you can use the path just to give you guys an idea of the different variations you have on using these buttons you have a lot of different options right over here you have flattened terrain you have tunneling path supports curved slopes curb on ground path railing on ground queue railing on elevated railing on ground path snap alongside barriers use T-junction when joining path and it's also very good to know that you have the align to grid. I get a lot of people asking me like how do you make this? How do you do that? So you just put down a path and mostly I would say just have another one just so you know that how you want it to be. If you want it to go like straight to that side just align it yourself with your eye, put it down then select this align to grid option. And then you can see that we'll find this grid and then if you click it then you will have this grid and then you can continue with squared edges you can also turn that off so that it will make round edges but if you want to have some kind of platform you can also just delete the round edges select the square edges again and i got these questions a lot also because of the scenarios there's one scenario where you have like this path section and then you have an exhibit right in the middle section right over here so you can basically just delete that one with right clicking or use that alt button here so right click on it and then you can put a exhibit right in here you can obviously make it more wide if you want to have more exhibits in there for example I didn't really see too many people in their tutorials mentioning the fact why we don't have curbs for one option so you have this one and this is basically flat and as far as i remember the reason they deleted that is because we were like playing planet coaster and we were like yeah but i i just want to hide it away you know and i just want to make either your own ones which makes sense you can have like rocks or anything like that right along the edges of your path so you don't have to hide this high up curve uh, or you put down fences whatever you want to do you can do it but the reason they did this is because we wanted to create smooth plazas with our own stuff. So if you have, for example, the flat wall pieces and you create this as a building and you can make it as big as you want. If you have like a super wonky big plaza, you want to make it like a very smooth one then you can just hide it away with the flat walls and you can have a totally different looking plaza instead of the fact that you just have not that this is bad because this looks very beautiful but for some reason maybe inside of a building maybe you have a square building or something a little bit different and you want to hide away the path underneath it then you can just put down the flat roofs and hide it away and that is as far as i know the reason because we really wanted to do this and then they were like you know what we're going to remove the the curbs 
and then you will be able to hide your whole path away. So if you have small little gaps and stuff, you don't see it and the people will just walk over this. So we got the grid pieces right over here and then you have also grid pieces right over here. You can variate as you can see right over here. You can really play along with that. You can hide away the curbs, you can have fences, the new fences compared to Planet Coaster are really great, so if you don't want to bother to create your own fences, then definitely just use the fences of the game. So something you will also see in Silver at his tutorial, but I just really wanted to show this, is if you have a cross, like a sharp cross with your paws, then you may notice that a lot of YouTubers that have played Planet Coaster have like those very smooth little corners. So just quickly to show you guys how you do that. If you, for example, have this cross, I think that's the easiest way to show it. You see that we have like very straight edges right over here. So when you put down a path like that and then right click on it and delete it, you can see that this path section will now be smoothed out. And that is something a lot of us use in Planet Coaster and in Planet Zoo because it's just really useful. Now the last part is always a little bit hard, but if you just look long enough, then you should be able to put it down. And as I said, it is a little bit wonky, so yeah, things like that happen. Uh, so yeah, I did put it down now and you can continue doing this. Uh, but it's not like endless, at some point you are just not able to delete it anymore and it will delete like the whole section. But let's say for example you have something like this, I'm just gonna quickly put down some path. And then what you can do is hold Z and then you will have like a very sharp junction, like very smooth which is very nice. So let's say I'm going down like that and then I will connect it right over here. So I do have like very sharp angles right over here. So if I put this one down, I can smooth this section out and the same goes for this side. So it will smooth it out and you can continue doing this. At some point it will just delete the whole path and then just Ctrl Z to undo two times and then that is the shape you have to go for because sometimes it's just not working properly and like exactly right now. So just Ctrl Z and go back to that spot because as you can see he makes this whole path section as just one section. So yeah, at some point it is not supposed to be in here, it was some kind of bug or a glitch and yeah, well, we use it in our advantage. But you can create very nice plazas with this. Definitely go and check out Silver at his tutorial of how he built plazas and stuff in Planet Coaster because it works exactly the same. Now regarding bridges and this is also mentioned by Mike Sheets. He also made a video about my Malin Zoo of how he created very not so steep angled bridges. So this is like the in-game one and you can have like very more smoother ones. Now I use this technique a lot of times for creating the platforms where we will get back to in a minute, but I just wanted to show you guys the basics of how you can do these things. So when you use control, like as you can see right now, it will snap to whatever path there is. So when you use control and you press control, then you can see that it will stop snapping no matter what you do. So that's something very useful if you want to create like a path going right next to it. That's very useful if you don't want it to snap to it. Uh, the other thing you want to know is the button shift. Because when you use shift, you can go up and down and have the height you want it to be. So if we press shift again, it will align to the ground. So if you want to create something like that, but then more of yeah, like your own angle instead of the angles you have in game, because that is just holding your mouse button up. You have a stairs, one down is more sloped, and then you go down again. And you can do the same thing here with curved slopes. So you can have a curved slope right over here. And you can also just create your own ones. We're going to press shift to go up just right over here, something like that. And we're going down, J is down for your slopes and U is going up if you want to use the buttons. 
I don't really use them that often, but sometimes they can be very useful. So I'm gonna press Ctrl and Shift at the same time. And now I let go of Shift, and then I will see what the height is right over here. So this would be the same height if I raise it a little bit more with Shift. And now I want to go down, because I don't want to have a super tight slope. I want it to be smooth. So I'm going to put this one down right over here. And now we have to find, it, it doesn't save the right height. So we want to find the same height right over here. And we're gonna move to the other side, just to give an idea of how you can use it. Obviously there are more ways or you want to have different sizes, but this is a way of how you can create nice slopes without it to be... You can, you can use the angle snap button, but it doesn't make it super straight, so you can also just do it without the angle snap to have more control over it. Uh, so yeah, you can put it down right over here. And then just make sure to move to, to the different sides to see if you can have like the straight top. I'm just only moving with my mouse button just to see if it will snap differently because I don't want it to be like it is right now. I don't really think that we will be able to do something else so it doesn't really stay straight. So what I want to do is I want to put one down. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again. So I'm gonna raise it to this height. And then I'm going to put this one again right over here. I'm still holding control right now. And now it will snap. And we have a nice flat angle on the top. So now we have a very slow little bridge. And obviously if you have water underneath it then you have a you can decorate it all by yourself etc but just to give you an idea of how you can control the height without using the standard slopes you have in game so things you can do with a viewing gallery like we did in my franchise series you have a little stairs right over here and a raised path right over here so this could basically be your viewing gallery for your habitat you will be building right over here this is something you can do and I will show you guys how you can do it and the same way goes for this is just a different shape and maybe if you wonder why would you want to do this that's because sometimes you want to use the null fence instead of the basic barriers you have in the game so if you have a null fence you can obviously have the terrain as your fencing but you can also have wall pieces as your fencing and I did notice that it's sometimes very hard to have your barriers like close enough to your path curves to really close it off and I, it just didn't feel right so that's why we have the null fence so if you would basically have your habitat and your fencing right over here you can have a null fence just going underneath this path and then you will be free to create your own fencing uh, with walls you can decorate them however you want it to be you can use the in-game construction fences like these guys so yeah you can do a lot of things with just this technique of building paths so i will show you guys how you can do that and the same counts for this section of course and as you can see i did put down the difference of these paths right over here so you can have a square one if you just select this and then you put one down, delete it, and then this one will end up with a squared edge, just like on that side. So yeah, let's just jump into these techniques, or at least this one. This one basically works the same, only the shape is different. So let's go to this section, and we're going to build a path. Oh, we can just continue this one. Okay, so now we have our path. And what we're going to do, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Obviously, the size is all yours. So we press control because we don't want it to snap to this path, obviously. And because this is the same height right now as this path, we can exactly tell how high we want it to be. As in, I just press shift and I'll go up. We keep holding control and we just go here. Now, what you, it's hard, like sometimes you put it down and it's just too close to this path and you won't be able to connect it. So keep that in mind. And if you go further away, you will have a sloped 
connection instead of a stairs connection so that's also difference that's just a little bit of you testing it out and if it's too close or too far away just do it again and you will learn eventually a little bit more of how to do that so what i want to do i want to have two of these angles and i'm going to use angle snap just to make sure that everything is straight just because i want to have a straight viewing gallery in this case so now we have the viewing gallery right over here and I could either choose to have one in the middle, I can have one or two on the side. So in this case, I'm just gonna have two on the sides. So as you can see, it will automatically connect it to the other path and we have a nice little staircase in this case. And if you just put it away a little bit further, then you will be able to have just a sloped angle instead. That is just how you prefer it to be. How do you create the round viewing gallery? Just to give you an idea of how to do that and like this most interesting part is probably the fact that you want to have these guys be the same length and that is the most challenging part of it all. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna press control again, you're gonna raise the path a little bit just how high you want it to be compared to the rest. Let's make it a little bit lower so maybe we can have a sloped angle. So what I mostly do is put down these guys somewhere, I hope in the middle section. And now we're going to create the shape and obviously you can use your angle snap if you really want it to be like in the same angles. Just take one step or two steps or anything like that. You can, you can have it however you want it to be and then do the same thing on this side. Angle snap is really useful. And in this case, we already have the right length almost. So this one looks a little bit longer maybe. So what you can do if that happens, you just delete these path sections and then you go back to this section and then you raise the path just to be at the same length. You keep holding control so you shift to raise the path and then just put this one down there where you think, you have to feel it a little bit, but where you think will be the end. And then we're going to connect it. And mostly the best thing to do is just don't use the angle snap for that. Just so you have a little bit more freedom of how the curve will be. So if you want to have like those grid ends, just make it longer with the grid section and remove it and you can do the same thing on this side you can make it longer delete it and then you have like very cool straight squared edges so now the only thing we have to do is connect this section and in this case i want to connect it in the middle and as you can see right now it's not working because it is unfortunately too close so it's just not able to connect this path however we want it to be which is pretty unfortunate Okay, so what you then have to do is just delete the middle section, connect this path again, and hopefully we are able to connect it now with a path. And there you go. Now we do have a little stairs right over here. And it just really basically depends how high you make this section and how far away you put it. So yeah, that's all a little bit of practice, but hopefully this technique will help you a little bit to get started with creating some more interesting habitats than just having a path here and a fence. Obviously that's not wrong, but if you want to do some more creative things, this is definitely a way to go for. So the same thing you can do with this grid section. This is basically exactly the same as we just did, only then we only use the grid pieces. We're going to have a raised path, so control, hold shift and just raise your path and then we're going to put it down and in this case we're going to put down two of them just to make sure that it's aligned to this path like that and then we're going to align it to the grid and we're gonna put one here we're gonna delete that one put that one here and now you basically have a big platform so imagine having like a huge habitat right over here you can you can do really awesome things with this you can also put this one in the middle of a habitat and have just like a very long straight section and then a staircase or anything to 
a path on the side so as you can see right over here it makes a slope one because it's just not needed to have a staircase which is also really nice and obviously you can have the railings on elevated and you can really create a nice viewing platform with whatever fence you want with whatever path structure you want you can really do awesome things with this now the last thing is a little bit more advanced and a little bit more of tweaking so you have these rocks that will basically be the path supports in this case now with this you can also have your path supports of the game so you can have these path supports turn them on and then you can see underneath it that it will create some path supports for you but you can also do the same thing as i did right over here just close it off with some wall pieces and create something with wood or whatever you want it to look like you can do crazy things with it but this is like the most advanced way of making viewing galleries and this is also a little bit of practice but i am going to show you guys a little bit of how you can do these things first things you can have a very nice round viewing galleries and i've made a few right over here just to give you an idea and this is really easy i have seen a lot of people asking me like how do you create that so whatever size you have you can have a very big round platform just put one down put another one down and then just have the sharpest angle you can get and then do the same thing and if you then connect it it will automatically make make a very round section to use in whatever way you can use plazas you can make viewing galleries out of it you can even use this for a underwater viewing gallery if you want to and if you haven't seen it yet check out my tutorial because i do talk about this too so how you can do this if you want to have like a little section in between just use the angle snap instead of like having this very sharp angle just make it a little bit wider like that so not the sharp angle just go back one step like that and then you will see that it will try to snap right away so now we have a very round section with a little hole in the middle so those kind of things it's very easy it looks maybe very difficult but it's really not that difficult just just keep trying and hopefully this tutorial will help you guys a little bit more with that so basically what we're going to do is the following thing. So we're going to raise the path a little bit and I'm gonna put you down right over here. And we're going to have another raised path section and we're gonna make it a little bit lower but I don't want it to be as low as here. So something like this. And we're gonna put that one right over here so you basically need to be aware that this is more of like okay what result do i get from planet zoo instead of like i want to have exactly this result because it's so wonky that you really just have to accept sometimes that it's not getting better or just keep trying keep trying keep trying <laughs> both ways and now I want to have the round platform. So I want to draw out where I want everything to be. So I'm going to raise this just a little bit more. And then we're going to put this one, let's say, right over here. And we're just going to connect it like that. Okay, so now comes the, the hardest part. You really have to... Be aware that these things just don't go super smooth sometimes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna connect this one first to this path section. So I'm going to use Z for this. So we'll make a nice angle snap. I'm gonna turn off these railings. And as you can see already, it's a little bit wonky on that edge and you can either hide that away or just make sure that this path section goes a little bit further away because it looks really wonky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to see how this will look because this is already looking way better. So if we connect this first, like that, and now we're going to connect this one. And that all looks pretty decent so far. 
So now I just want to see if I'm able, if I press Z again. Now it doesn't look as wonky anymore in that little corner section. So this is actually pretty easy to do that, but it can be super struggling. And now you have just a very nice smooth path going up here to a viewing gallery. So yeah, I really hope this tutorial gave you guys a little bit of an idea of how to use the path to together with creating viewing galleries for your habitats. If you haven't seen it yet, I've also made a video for the underwater viewing galleries, the basics of how to create one and also in combination with ideas of how you can use the path for it. So definitely go and check that one out. And we also did a tutorial, a basic tutorial of how to create a dome in Planet Zoo together with a little bit of the basics of how you can use the building tool. So yeah, definitely go and check those out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do let me know in the comment section if this tutorial was helpful for you. And if you need anything else, do let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to subscribe, of course, if you already haven't. And leave a like at the video if you enjoyed. And I really hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.